Hey folks, BCSG here. Today I'm going to be doing a Tackle Arsenal video. I know on Instagram I kind of previewed it as one single video, but I have decided to split the videos into two videos because otherwise it's going to be like a 45 minute video. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do a Rod and Real Arsenal, followed by in the next video, my Leo Arsenal. The reason being is I initially thought that the Rod Arsenal would take longer, but it seems like the, the Leo Arsenal might take longer because I really do want to get into some of the real specifics, especially of my ultralight Leos, so, or my micro Leos. I want to talk about each one um, a little bit more, so I want to give myself a bit more time. So hence, uh, I'm splitting the video into two. The first one will be the Rod and Real Arsenal. The next one will be the Leo Arsenal video. So anyway, before we begin, as you can see, today I am showing you a different angle of what I have come to call my man cave. And for the first time, well, let's, let's take a look at the man cave. So that's, that was the man cave and that's basically where I work, where I, or at least where I do, where I work from home, when I am working from home. Um, that's also where my wife works when she works from home and that's where I pretty much do everything related to my hobbies as well. So anyway, um, I don't want to get off track. So my tackle arsenal or more specifically in this segment of the video my rod and reel arsenal what i have here are the rod my spinning and bait casting setups organized somewhat by line weight and i'll be going through each setup and doing a little a very short uh description of what the model is what what i use it for generally and if we have time, a short, I suppose, review, not really review, but a short opinion about each of the rods and the reels that I own. All right, now, so let's get right to it. All right, first off, I'm going to start with uh, bait casting first because there's just fewer bait casting setups. All the way here, we have my lightest bait casting setup. That's a Core MG7, Core 51 MG7. It is on a Trickster rod. All right, a Storm Trickster. It is the six foot seven, two piece, four to 12 pound Trickster. Um, in my opinion, I, I generally use this for, oh, for a while I used it for reservoir fishing. I think the rating is very appropriate for general fishing in freshwater in Singapore. 4 to 12 is a very good rating. The Trickster is an excellent rod. The action is really good. It's extremely value for money. I don't really think there are many rods that fall into this category. I do understand that there are some more recent models that are more popular, that have become more popular, but this this is a good one right here. The, the real, this is the Core 51 MG7. I, I think most Folks who play with bait casters are familiar with this reel. It's not a new reel. Uh, it's quite a few years old. It, it was at one point Shimano's touted finesse bait casting reel. Though skill-wise, yeah, you could give me you could give me the most finesse reel on the planet. I'm not going to be able to cast anything below five grams. It's just I, I'm I'm sorry. Yeah. Up next we have. My newest bait casting, um, my newest addition to my bait casting arsenal. This is the 2016 Metanium DC. I didn't buy it for any reason other than the fact that, much like how I've always wanted to own a Stella, I've always wanted to own a DC reel. You know, and, and anyone who knows anything about Shimano knows that they are very well known for their DC series. 
whether it's positive or negative, they are very well known for it. And I've, you know, it has always fascinated me the fact that um, a bait casting reel has a chip in it that basically applies the brakes for you without you having to thumb the spool all that much. And so I went to Japan when I got the opportunity with the tax rebates and the discounts that were available, I've just decided, you know what, I'm going to get it. And of course, if you recognize the rod, if it looks familiar, yes, this is another triple B rod. I bought this rod quite a few months before I, I bought the spinning one, actually. Um, it's exactly the same rod. It's the Daiwa triple B 666 TMLRB. It is the lightest bait casting rod in the telescopic setup. It is also six and a half feet long. Everything about this rod, if you watched my uh, review on the spinning version, is almost the same except for the line rating. The line rating is rated for six to 14 pounds. And I think it is a perfect match for the Matanium DC. But anyway, handling it, it is the XG version of the Matanium DC, which means it's extra fast gear ratio. I specifically bought the extra fast gear ratio because generally I like to use high gear or extra fast gear reels. I, at least for fresh water. You know, for salt water, you tend to need the power and all of that, the cranking power, so you go for power geared stuff. But in fresh water, when using minnows, jerk baits, and all that, I tend to prefer reels that allow me to really get the line in really fast. All right, so that's it for this one. Let's move on. Up next, we have my Curado. This is a Curado I. It, I bought it to replace my old Curado E after using it for so long. I, did, did I need to replace my Curado E? No, I didn't. Why did I replace it? Well, firstly, because the new Curado is an excellent reel. Secondly, is because I was very... Uh, I was very intrigued by Shimano's new brake system. Those who are familiar with Shimano brake casters know that traditionally it's the VBS brake system requires you to open the side plate and essentially play with the little feet that um, affect the centrifugal braking of the reel. So the more feet you, you set to on, the more brakes you have. What this reel does, the new technology, it basically allows you to do the same thing but after setting that initial brake setting, there is a knob or a dial on the outside right here that allows you to fine tune that setting further and I found that extremely intriguing. So when I heard about it, well, I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna get it because the Curado is one of my favorite bait casting wheels. What I have it paired up with here is probably my hands down favorite rod series on the planet the shimano bestera i will talk the most about this rod right now because i have all the rods in this series so I'm, I, I don't feel the need to have to repeat myself every single time i pull out another bestera so the bestera is shimano's mid-range rod it costs about 180 to 200 dollars i think for a rod this price I feel that it is one of the best rods I have ever used. It is extremely durable. Um, the, my bait casting rods are newer than my spinning rods. I've owned my spinning Basteras for years. Like, I think the year they came out, I bought them. So, it's a two piece rod. It comes from 8 to 16 pound class in the spinning setup and goes all the way up to, if I'm not wrong, 1225 that should be the highest uh, line class that this series comes with so yeah the rod I have right here is the Bastera B65 MH it is basically the B stands for bait casting 65 stands for the length it is 6 feet 5 and it's medium heavy therefore it is rated for 10 to 20 pounds it is a fast action rod but it tends to to be considered relatively soft compared to compared to the rods the other rods in this class soft meaning the tip is really is really soft this is a good and a bad thing i generally feel it's a good thing some folks don't like it to each his own so anyway that's the the curado eye 
um, the gear ratio is 6.3 to 1 and this is the Bastera B65MH. Okay, next up we have the bigger version of the previous Bastera. It is the B70MH. It is everything about it is the same, so once again I'm not going to elaborate. This is this rod is rated for 12 to 25 pounds. On the rod, I have a Bay Game 301. The reason why I got this for this rod is because I needed I'd say I needed a little bit bigger bait caster to go with this rod that I would use in places like Bangkok. Uh, f uh, fishing in, in the various ponds in Bangkok, you, you hit red tails in excess of 20 to 30 kilos. You know, you're hitting uh, chow prior catfish in excess of 50 kilos. This setup right here can handle almost all of it. So anyway, yeah, nothing much to say about it. it it's just any other bait casting reel. It's nothing special about the bait game. It's it's on the cheaper side. It's durable. It it works. The drag isn't that strong, but you can just lock it down. It works. I have thirty pound suffix on this reel. Oh yeah, I just I just realized that I I never I never talked about the line. All my bait casting reels, except for the Metanium DC, use suffix eight three two. The Core 51 uses, I think it is 8 pounds, suffix 832, 8 pounds. The Metanium uh, DCXG uses YGK G Soul PE2. The Curado uses 20 pound 832, and the Bay Game uses 30 pounds. So that's it for my bait casting arsenal. So, anyway, moving to the, to the spinning setups. First on the list is a rod that I've only actually featured in a video recently. It was recently featured in my Lakeside video. So is it a new setup? No, not exactly. It, what is this setup for and why do you not see it often? Well, this setup is a the Shimano Sore SS setup. Both the rod and the reel are Shimano Sore. Sore. I don't really know how to pronounce the, the name. The reel is the 2000 HGS and the rod has, if I'm not wrong, it has a pretty, oh actually no, this is not the one. I thought it had a pretty complicated name. It is the, the Sore SS S706ULT. It is rated for 1.5 to 4 pounds, so this officially makes this the lightest rod that I own in terms of power. Why I got this rod? I got this rod Mainly, mainly for ultra finesse work. I'm not talking about ultra light. I'm talking about less than ultra light stuff like jig heads and little little rubbers and grubs that are, that go up to at most one and a half grams. You know, from weightless all the way up to one and a half at most two grams. And that's what I mainly got it for. The length and the action of the rod allows me. The length and the action of the rod allows me to cast extremely light lures a lot further it paired up with the appropriate line it really gets those extremely light bits out there and I like the sensitivity of the rod it's a bit slower in terms of action than what you would typically see me using but that is pretty much unavoidable it's inevitable when when you have a seven and a half foot rod it's very difficult to find a true fast or extra fast action seven and a half foot rod um, in this 1.5 to 4 pound line class. It is virtually impossible to find. This was the fastest action one I found and to be honest, it serves its purpose. Now, why don't you see it often? You don't see it often simply because it's a seven and a half foot rod, it's a two piece rod. I usually fish in the middle of the day when I have bricks in between work I'm not going to be carrying around a two-piece rod that's the reason why I'm so obsessed with telescopic rods all right so that's the Shimano uh, sorry SS and the real is the sorry CI4 2000 HGS oh yes the line is YGK G soul upgrade PE 0 0.8 
Okay, the next rod needs no introduction, so I'm going to skim over it really quickly. This is my Daiwa Triple B rod. It's the rod that I use the most often. You see it in almost every one of my videos. Of course, the reel here is the new Vanquish reel. And I just made a video about that as well, so there's not much need to talk about it here. This is the set, my go-to setup almost every time I go fishing. And obviously, I'm thoroughly impressed and in love with this setup. It serves every single function that I need. So, yeah, that's that. If you want to know more info about uh, this setup, just go, go backtrack into my videos and you're going to find multiple videos of me talking about this rod and a couple of videos of me talking about this reel. All right, so this is the Rapala RFS Elegance Rod paired with the Shimano Altegra 1000 reel. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the reel because this was my go-to reel with the Daiwa rod before I got the Vanquish. So I won't really talk too much about this reel, except to say that yeah, it's a workhorse reel. It's 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 a good reel. It's included in the dis uh, in the in the review video I did of my ultralight setup. So you can go watch that if you want to know more about this reel. What I want to do is talk about the rod. This is my least favorite rod in my ultralight arsenal. I know that that statement might get some of you riled up. Oh my goodness, it's a Rapala RFS rod. It's like a $200 rod. It's such a popular rod. It's a well-liked rod. And BCSG just said that he doesn't like it. Well, I don't want to badmouth any tackle. That's not my style. But I will be perfectly honest when it comes to my opinions of how I feel a specific piece of tackle performs. And I personally don't like this rod at all at all. In fact, I'm considering selling the rod. Now, this is not an official I want to sell the rod announcement. This is me saying I'm considering selling it because I, do, I dislike the rod. But we'll see. So what don't I like about this rod? Number one, it feels dead in my hand. Feeling dead means I don't find it particularly sensitive. I, I don't find it sensitive at all, actually. It feels a bit unwieldy. It, it, it is a light rod. When you pick it up vertically, it's an extremely light rod. But once I hold it like this, it just the balance just feels off, and it's not. It, it feels like it's it's top heavy. With a, a non high end one thousand size reel, I like the balance to be more back here, where the the weight of the rod is centered around the reel. Now I'm sure a one thousand size Altegra is not too small or, or at least mismatch for an ultralight six six foot eight rod and for this to still be more balanced towards the front I find that to be an issue very small issue but an issue that is enough for me to chalk it up as a con so the balance is off it's not sensitive I'm a stickler for the backbone of a rod. Now, this is a controversial issue, so I'll try not to piss anyone off. Just a real quick skim over. The backbone of a rod is the direction at which a rod tends to bend when you load the rod. Now, I'm just going to demonstrate this real quick. This is an example of a rod without a straight backbone. So, going by where the rod is supposed to load, if I loaded the rod this way, the guides should technically stay on top. But as you can see, the guides don't stay on top. Watch that again. See, I'm placing the guides on top and I'm loading the rod and it falls to the side. If the backbone was straight, which I can show you an example of later, as I load the rod and let go of my fingers, the rod would stay like this. Right now, I'm holding it. That's why the guides are staying up. But if the backbone is straight and I load the rod and I let go, let go of my thumb like this, the rod should stay in that position. What this rod does is once I let go of my thumb, it rolls to the side. That means the backbone is actually on the side of the rod. Once again, controversial issue, nitpicking, it doesn't really matter. It just bugs me, that's all. 
So that will be the third reason why I don't like the rod and also the conclusion to this particular setup. Anyway, next, next rod. Now this is just going to be a rod, no reel. This is my newest rod. I literally just bought this rod. Like five days ago, three days ago, I had five, five days ago I think. This is the Majorcraft Volki SFS series. It is the, oh goodness, the VKS S642UL. It's an ultralight rod. It's rated for two to five pounds. Why did I buy this rod? I bought it simply because I've been eyeing this rod for an extremely long time. This is not a new model. This rod has been out for a couple of years, in fact maybe more than that. And I had my eye on this rod ever since it first entered Leo Haven. Every time I would go in there, this rod would be sitting right there. I mean this is the I believe this is like the only one that they have. Every single time I walk into Leo Haven, the rod is just sitting there looking at me. The specs fit perfectly into what I'm looking for, just that the price didn't really match, so to speak. And obviously I made the mistake of getting the RFS over this rod when I decided to put down the money to buy the rod. But anyway, fast forward a, a year or so later, I walked into the, into the store and I just decided, you know what, I'm going to get it. And I did. So what do I use this rod for? Pretty much anything I would use my Daiwa Triple B for. Reservoir fishing, basically. Ultralight micro luring. I just wanted a two-piece rod that I could do that with. On days that I don't work. So it's rated for two to five pounds. This is six feet four inches long. It is supposed to be... I think it's supposed to be extra fast. Let me see if it's written here. No, it's not. But I think it's rated as extra fast. It's definitely not extra fast. It's actually fast action. Uh, I love the way the, the rod loads. It is a genuine J-bend kind of thing where this section of the rod doesn't bend at all. The bend starts in the second 50% of the rod. Now, this is also the rod that I'm going to use to show you an example of a straight back bone. So remember how when I was talking about the RFS, I loaded the rod and the guides fell to the side the minute I let go of my thumb. What happens with this rod? No thumb. The guides stay on top. That's what I mean. And you can roll it around. You can roll it around and pull it again. The guides just, every single time, the guides will pop back on top. That's what I mean by a rod with a straight back bone. Once again, because it's a controversial topic, I feel the need to repeat myself. This is a really small issue. It doesn't matter. It's just personally annoying to me when a rod doesn't, when a rod is not built along its own backbone. It just annoys me. It doesn't really make a difference when you're fishing. That's all there is to it. That's really pretty much all there is to say about this rod. Same use situation as the Daiwa Triple B. And I would pair it with the Vanquish as well. Alright, this next setup. This is my medium light setup. It is a Graphite Leader Bosco RV, which if I'm not wrong, many years back the Bosco RV was introduced as the budget series of Graphite Leader. I don't believe you can get this rod anymore, at least locally. It is paired with a Fruger Patriarch size what size is this this is a size 30 which is roughly equivalent to a shimano c3000 maybe a 2500 size and on this i have 12 pound spider wire ultra cast braid so what do i use this rod for it's rated for 4 to 12 pounds i use it for a wide variety of stuff generally i would bring this to a pond uh, whether it be Bottle Tree Park or now it's called Auto. I've, I've fished it at reservoirs, of course. I fished it in Bangkok. I've brought this rod to the Bunma Ponds in uh, Bangkok. It's perfect, perfect, 4 to 12 pounds. Perfect setup for Bunma Ponds. I think this rod cost, honestly, I can't remember how much this rod cost me. It's in the low hundreds, between 100 to 150 bucks. 
and for a rod in that price range it's served me really well I think this rod is more than five years old uh, not much else to say about it it's really short but it's a light rod for its price oh yeah if you notice right here if, I don't know if you can see it that's some duct tape right there that's my only gripe about this rod the real seat has this really rough texture to it and I found it a bit uncomfortable when you're holding the rod so I wrapped some duct tape on and it just solved the problem made it real nice and smooth so anyway yeah that, that's it uh, I've talked about the Fluger Patriot before it is no longer in production I believe back in the day when it first came out it was Fluger's lightest reel in the series it is a magnesium reel with a carbon handle it, the spool is also well at least the internals of the spool is made from carbon the externals is magnesium I think it's been too long this reel is so old uh, I'll put a link to the description in, uh, uh, to the I'll put a link to this reel in the description below so you can check it out further like I said not exactly sure if it's still in production so anyway yeah moving on next we have another Bastera now if you're wondering why this Bastera looks a bit different it's because as I said my spinning Basteras are older, much older than my bait casting Basteras. And it was in the day and age where, for some weird reason, I did not like cop handles. But I loved this rod so much that I was willing to pay to get someone to switch out the handles. In hindsight, would I still do it today? No. Was Did it negatively impact the rod? Not at all. It's just that I didn't like cock handles back then, I like EVA handles and I got someone to switch it out and I, I, I liked the real seat. So I got someone to switch it out, I paid someone to do it and I have no regrets doing that, even though I wouldn't do it again today. So I'm not going to talk much about this rod, it's exactly the same, this is the S65MH rated for 10 to 20 pounds, it's exactly the same specs as the bait casting version. On here, if it looks familiar, it's another Fluger Patriot. Once again, I don't have to elaborate. I use this setup for Bangkok, basically. Bangkok, heavy luring, toman fishing. This is a perfect snakehead rod, to be perfectly honest with you. I would use this for tomans, aka snakeheads, all day long, all night long. It's the perfect setup. The action is just right. I would even use it in Singapore if I really wanted to... to get the big ones and ensure that my tackle doesn't fail yeah this is my go-to setup right here okay the last two rods in my arsenal are both the same rods much like the Bastera they're the same the same model just different size and the reels are the same as well this is the Upro Salty Chief I'm pretty sure I don't really need to talk much about this rod because it's so popular in Singapore. It's a budget rod. It's a high performance budget rod. It is hands down my favorite butt joint rod that is sub $100. So a butt joint rod means it joins at the butt. Let's see if I can get this out. Yeah, it joins at the butt like that. Okay. Um, it's arguably a stronger type of joint than the standard two piece rod which joins right in the middle. There is no compromise in the blank, hence a butt joint rod. Now what's the real purpose of a butt joint rod? To be honest, it does make it slightly more portable, but that's really about it. It's, a, it's about being slightly more portable, but not compromising the strength of the blank. And the blank is strong. I have pulled in fish way too big for this rod. Way too big. I brought this rod to Bangkok. This is the 8 to 15 pound, right? 8 to 15 pound version. And I have pulled in red tails in excess of 30 kilos with this rod and this reel, which is the 2011 Shimano Twin Power C3000. My favorite high-end reel from Shimano to date, excluding the Stella because obviously I don't own one, but I think many folks familiar with this reel would agree that the Twin Power, the 2011 Twin Power is one of the best Twin Powers ever made. I can't say much about the new one. 
there's so many things missing from it but the 2011 twin power is the perfect reel it comes with rigid drag support so good x ship gearing um, i changed this to the um the umea power knob it's well 2000 i bought it in 2011 so now it's been five years i have never serviced this reel not once no servicing maintenance yes servicing no still runs smooth no graininess no sandiness in in, in the wind no, no back play in the handle it's a workhorse and like i said i've landed red tails in excess of 30 kilos on this on this setup right here and if anyone has fished for red tails before you know a 30 kg red tail is no joke people fight those on pe3 pe4 equipment this is a size c3000 reel with a 20 pound not even i think this might be a 15 pound suffix 832 on an 8 to 15 pound rod that's how good this setup is unfortunately it's a butt joint rod so transportation or uh, mobility is a problem the last rod in my arsenal exactly the same setup this is the salty chief this is the heavier version it's the 10 to 20 pound version now this is also probably the only two rods that i won't be able to link in the description because i don't believe because they are kind of they're made in china budget rods i think i think all right and I, i've never i've never been able to find these rods online before so i'll try my best to get a link in there if i don't i'm sorry uh, so this is the 10 to 20 pound version matched with a twin power 4000 2011 twin power 4000 everything about the setups are identical it's just bigger even the line is still suffix 832 it's just heavier this is a thir uh, 30 pound 30 pound 832 on this wheel the other one has i think 15 or 20 pounds all right so that concludes my rod arsenal video my rod and reel arsenal video um i hope i didn't talk too much i hope i didn't talk too little and i hope i didn't miss anything um when talking about the rods i'm sure i did this is the first time i'm doing a tackle arsenal video but i did put the links all the links uh in the description below so that you can get more info on the rods and reels if you if you were interested unfortunately i won't be linking where you can buy them from i'm not sponsored by any tackle shop and i do not believe it's fair for me to promote any given tackle shop um but singapore is a small country i'm sure you can figure out where to buy it from if you have any questions that i didn't talk about and you can't find in the links for the various rods feel free to message me on facebook you know pm me on youtube asking me i'll, I'll try my best to answer your questions as uh as much as I as I can you know once again if you if you like this video you know if you think that tackle arsenal videos is something interesting give me a thumbs up if you didn't like the video give me a thumbs down share my videos with your friends if you learned something and of course lastly subscribe it helps me so I'll see you in the next video the next video will probably be my Leo arsenal I might inject a fishing uh, session in between that but at the moment I don't really have plans on doing that so the next video will probably be the Leo Arsenal so I'll catch you in the next video thanks for watching
My rot is gonna snap. Oh. Oh. 